American economy could be the first to crash as the U.S. will have no means to fund its deficit. The prices of all commodities would skyrocket, leading to an imbalance in the economy in the coming years. In conclusion, if BRICS plays their cards well by 2026, the U.S. dollar will lose its power in the international markets. Local currencies will dominate the financial sector and Wang among them could potentially become the next global reserve currency. What's up, guys? This is the Crypto Newsletter. It's Wednesday, October 11th at 7.50 a.m. And we got some breaking news. We got this morning JP Morgan debuts tokenized BlackRock shares as collateral with Barclays. BlackRock said tokenization of money market fund shares as collateral and clearing and margining transactions would dramatically reduce the operational friction in meeting margin calls. So JP Morgan has carried out its first live, its first live blockchain based collateral settlement transaction involving heavyweights like BlackRock and Barclays, the U.S. banking giant said on Wednesday. JP Morgan Ethereum based Onyx blockchain and the bank's tokenized collateral network TCN was used by BlackRock to tokenize shares in one of its money market funds. The tokens were then transferred to Barclays PLC for collateral on an over the counter derivatives trade. The tokenization for traditional financial assets is a big deal for banks and it's an area JP Morgan has been leading the charge with now joined by the likes of Citi and others. Tokenization occurred within a matter of minutes through connectivity between the funds transfer agent and TCN, JP Morgan said in a press release. The transfer between BlackRock and Barclays was near instantaneous and represents a first for BlackRock, JP Morgan and Barclays where the shares and money market funds are using collateral between bilateral derivatives counterparts. Onyx Digital Assets already enables clients to access intraday liquidity via repo transactions. JP Morgan's head of Onyx Digital Assets said in a statement, now with the launch, TCN clients can benefit from additional utility from their money market fund investments by posting tokenized money market fund shares as collateral a faster, more cost-effective way of meeting margin requirements. And then someone added uh, from BlackRock, the tokenization of money market fund shares as collateral and clearing and settlement and margining transactions would dramatically reduce the operational friction in meeting margin calls when segments of the market face acute margin pressures. There we go. So big deal. We're seeing the rise of tokenization across the board from all these heavyweights here. And then we're seeing this. So Spanish banks road test digital euro on existing payment infrastructures after year long tests. So all these proof of concepts are wrapping up. They're ready to go live in a big, big way. We see that after year long tests, the Spanish banking sector has made case for the reuse of existing payment infrastructure for the introduction of a digital euro kicked off in November 2022 up to 30 banks working in concert with infrastructure providers Vism, Iberpay, and RedSys ran a proof of concept with the aim of undertaking an in-depth analysis of the technical, operational, and business implications of the digital euro and its coexistence with existing payment instruments. So they were prepared to interconnect with other potential European services, its existing mechanisms for user registration. Yeah, yeah we'll keep going. The interconnection of faster payment services across Europe has been a long-term goal of the European Central Bank, which is expected to conclude its research into the implementation of a digital euro later this month. Guys, what have we been saying? You know, I'm gonna give you a sec to think about it. The holy grail, the holy grail of cross-border payments. And it was an ECB report published back August, 2022. I will never drop it. I'll never drop it because it's the end goal. As stated right here, as I've been saying, all these countries need to update all their payment systems to instant payments. So they update them to instant payments and then they connect them, you know, and then the launch of these CBDCs and then having the, the, the global standard ISO 222 and then enabling, you know, the, the pool of a bridge neutral digital settlement asset like XRP or XLM to facilitate the value transfer, value exchange me mechanism in an instantaneous, cost-efficient type of way. This is the end goal and we're seeing it and they're outlining it even here. The interconnection of faster payments services across Europe has been a long-term goal of the European Central Bank. 
which is expected to conclu- conclude its research into the implementation of a digital euro, euro later this month. The Holy Grail. It's the Holy Grail. They're marching along towards that. Then we got BRICS to completely ditch the US dollar in three years. This was uh, yesterday. So the BRICS bank, commonly called the New Development Bank, officially announced a three-year plan to completely end reliance on the US dollar. The three-year de-dollarization initiative will lead to BRICS settling trade in local currencies, not the US dollar. The new development bank is finding alternative ways to replace the US dollar from dominating the global financial sector. The new development bank will provide details to BRICS leaders highlighting the means to diminish transactions made in the US dollar. So we got, however, the three-year de-dollarization initiative could add further blows to the prospects of the US dollar, the NDB would provide guidelines to boost the usage of local currencies and strengthen the native economy of BRICS nations. Businesses in developing countries could thrive if local currencies are put forward as they don't lose out on foreign forex charges. Therefore, the global financial sector could change rapidly by 2026, leading the way to a new world order. Man, I got, I got something to read you after this. I'll stay to the whole thing towards the end. I'll read you a little snippet out of this book. The financial power could tilt from the west to the east and developing countries could take the driver's seat. That's where we're headed to. Uh, BRICS already controls 30% of the global economy and the numbers could shoot up if they completely end reliance on the U.S. dollar. Uh, Read here to know how many sectors in the U.S. will be affected if BRICS stops using the dollar for trade. We know that's where it's coming. The American economy could be the first to crash as the U.S. will have no means to fund its deficit. The prices of all commodities would skyrocket, leading to an imbalance in the economy in the coming years. In conclusion, if BRICS plays their cards well by 2026, the U.S. dollar will lose its power in the international markets. Local currencies will dominate the financial sector, and Wang among them could potentially become the next global reserve currency. Man, we are living in crazy times. And we released a bunch of videos from our Agartha course, and it's the first two missions. Mission one, it's the current system, why it sucks. It covers these things like the world reserve currency. It covers bricks, the Petro, all this stuff. Let me pull it up because we have it in a playlist here. So here we go. So this playlist, you, you should be able to see it um, by clicking on the profile here. You've got to go through these because it's spelling out the future year. Biggest you start with this one. It's in order. If you go to the profile and go in order, but this is laying out the roadmap. And you know, we've recorded these years ago and we're seeing it happen every single day. All this stuff pan out. And yeah, we're, we're living in these times and you guys got to look at this bank or one. It's pretty crazy. But yeah, so that is massive as far as what Brooke said. And the only way that they could be able to do this with local currencies is by going digital and launching central bank digital currencies, but then having an exchange mechanism, a neutral bridge asset where they can transact in their local currencies and not rely on the US dollar to be that intermediary currency in between them, but something else, right? Something that is not one country's control over. You know, we're seeing it every day, but the three-year plan and we're seeing, you know, we're, we got the timeline, right? And uh, there was something else that was pretty big a part of the statement here. Oh, the new world order. Yeah, I got to stay to the end. I'm going to, I'm going to read a snippet out of this, but yeah, it could end reliance on the U S dollar and it could skyrocket commodities and cryptos in the coming years. Absolutely. Like, you know, we keep saying it's going to be the biggest born all time. And we're going to see commodities and cryptos alike and, and watch that first video, the biggest scam in the history of mankind. I'm telling you, it's like all these videos will give you a telltale kind of snippet into what's on the horizon, what's happening every day. Um, yep. But this is where we're at and we're living in it. But let me actually just go and read this right now. Actually, you know what? Let me go back to the Discord. I posted it in the Discord. We go to the premium chat here. We could scroll up a little bit. I've got some snippets. The Road to Ruin, the Global Elite Secret Plan for the Next Financial Crisis. Absolute killer book. I read this in 2019 and we're seeing a lot of things pan out. But Behold the Black Horse. And then let's go down here. Yep. So it's talking about destroyed debt by inflation, 2018 to 2025. What have we been seeing? We've been seeing just that. But the transfer of gold to China, inclusion of the Chinese yuan and SCR in preparation for a deep liquid market in SCRs are the making of a new Bretton Woods, yet lacking the transparency and accountability of the original Bretton Woods. The new system is a grand bargain worked out in secret, conducted by stealth and understood fully by a relative handful of global elites. The final phase of this grand bargain is inflation to wipe out the real cost of global sovereign debt. We're seeing that happen. I mean, go to the debt clock. 
uh, org. If central banks cannot cause inflation despite their best efforts, the IMF would create inflation for them with mass- massive issuance of SDRs to be spent. On global infrastructure and global welfare, the infrastructure needs intermediated by the World Bank would be targeted at so-called climate change, another elite hobby horse. Now the post-crisis global elite plan is seen in full. And we're in this phase. And then if we go down a little bit, then look at this. It's only a matter of when you are going to see a nation state, a group or an actor engage in destructive behavior against critical infrastructure of the United States. And that was the commander of the U.S. Cyber. U.S. Cyber Command, uh, direct area. Yeah, yeah. Um, we go up a little bit. There's some more here. Chapter two, one money, one world, one order. Just like this was just saying, a new global order, new world order or something. Let's go back. Yeah, right here, leading the way to a new world order. This book is the keys. So yeah, let's uh, go down a little bit because world money, world money is not a new concept. It has been used throughout history. World money is gold. The elite agenda is a whole is to hoard gold and substitute special drawing rights as a currency of world trade and finance. Other forms of money, including clamshells, feathers, and paper, have been used at certain times in places with tribal consent or force of law. Any medium can be money based on confidence in its value in some future exchange. Yet gold is, gold is the only money good at all times in all places and therefore is true world money. Before the Renaissance, world money existed as precious metal coins or bullion. Caesars and kings hoarded gold dispense it to their troops, fought over it, and stole it from one another. Land was another form of wealth since antiquity. Still, land was not money because unlike gold, it cannot easily be exchanged, exchanged and has no uniform grade. A century ago, J.P. Morgan summed up the ancient state of affairs in his cryptic remark, money is gold and nothing else. In the 14th century, Florentine bankers called that because they worked on a bench of Banco in the piazzas of Florence and other city-states accept the deposits of gold in exchange for notes, a promise to return the gold on demand. And that was the EQ de Marc, which is um, going to be the current day, current day Holy Grail. You know, uh, the notes were a more convenient form of exchange than physical gold. Notes can be transported long distances and redeemed for gold at branches of a Florentine family bank in London or Paris. Bank notes were not unsecured liabilities, but rather warehouse receipts on gold. Renaissance bankers realized they could put the gold in their custody to other uses, including loans to princes. This left more notes issued than physical gold in custody. Bankers relied on the fact that the notes would not all be redeemed all at once and that they and they could recoup gold from princes and other parties in time to meet redemptions. Thus was born fractional reserve banking, in which physical gold held was a fraction of paper promises made. There has been no end of mischief since. Yeah, man, like <laughs> these times that we're living in, so let's go to this one right here. And we got disorder has always manifested itself kinetically. The cost of disorder accounted in death and destruction. Through the replacement of bronze by steel, the invention of sail and stirrup, and the secession from sword to guns, one constant in the struggle between order and disorder has been its physical form. Wealth, a key complement to warfare, also existed in physical form as precious metals, jewels, fine art, livestock, or land in possession. Yet, contests among states and non-state actors are increasingly conducted in digital realms. Obvious examples are computer system hacks by by state cyber brigades and criminal gangs. The line between enlisted cyber warriors and criminals can be blurred to forestall retaliation. Distributed denial of service is the mildest attack mode. More serious are penetrations that take control of critical infrastructure and dams and power grids so floods and blackouts can commence on cue. More threatening are sleeper attack viruses planted in deep, planted deep in stock exchange operating systems, awaiting activation as part of a larger attack. Such sleeper viruses also serve as a deterrent to attack by the nation hosting an infected system. One such attack planted by Russian military intelligence was discovered inside the operating system of the NASDAQ stock market in 2010. The virus was disabled. No one knows how many undiscovered digital viruses are laying in wait. Viruses can erase customer accounts without trace. Used offensively, these viruses can create an uncontrolled flood of sell orders or of widely held stocks such as Apple or Amazon. Military doctrine called for attacks that can join with force multipliers and attacker will wait for a day when stocks are already down 5%, say 900 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, then launch an attack to amplify the downward momentum. The result could be a single day market meltdown. Some deep stuff. 
I should start a book club. I should start a book club, read you guys a book, a chapter out of this book every day. Let me know what you think. But yeah, that's some, you know, this is where we're headed. Everything's kind of being spelled out for us. I'm going to find some more gold nuggets in that book and I'll drop them in the Discord. So the link is in the bio for that. So let's go back here because uh, we got legal entity identified for derivatives November 2023 go live. So right here we're seeing a uh, client. Let's, let's pull this up. I'm not gonna... So yeah, we're seeing uh, in November, we're going to see an upgrade here. The ISO we're seeing uh, for derivatives as well too. token identifiers. Let's go to another thing here. We got Paul T. Jones is worth 8.1 billion and pioneered the modern hedge fund industry. And he says, I think Bitcoin takes on a larger percentage of your portfolio. I like Bitcoin. And then we got Jim Cramer just the other day, yesterday, saying, I bought some big. Oh, no, no, sorry. He said, he predicts that Mr. Bitcoin is about to go down big. Let's just hear what he has to say real quick. Mr. <laughs> there we go. So then we got our member Hedera has announced a stablecoin studio is now accessible on the public Hedera network. This is the global business blockchain business council supported by Hedera, Swirls Lab, HBAR Foundation. Stablecoin Studio is an open source toolkit designed for easy stablecoin application development. Hedera is going to be big. And then upcoming session in New York City, October 16th in five days. You got Tech Week, um, Hedera presenting an evening discussion network and insight joined by representatives from Google and other um, places with the intersection of Web3 and AI. Then you have, oh, this was good. This I'm going to save this for the end. You got to wait for this on the end. This was actually gold. Whoever did this is a, is a legend. Uh, but, um, oh, I'm going to be doing a deep dive on cyber pandemic, kind of going with the, the narrative here, ICE-9. I found some good stuff. I already got a deep dive cook in there, so we'll save that for another time. And then R3. R3 has been a part of a lot of these uh, big projects with, like, uh, I think one was Project Mariana, like, all these BIS projects and uh, all these initiatives, like with all these central banks working on these wholesale CBDCs have been either using R3 or Quorum. And R3, you know, in the code, R3 code settler, R3 core to settler code, which shows it hooks into an XRP Oracle along Swift. In the code, you can't, you can't fake the code. The code is there, R3 code, uh, XRP payment, XRP settlement, Swift service, you know, to, like it's all there. You can really peel it back and, and, you know, there it is. So then let's go to the next thing. There's no choice. Major currencies are moving to ISO 222, the Bank of Israel said. And I think around this time, two years ago, Bank of, I got to pull it up. I think it was back like December or I think it was December of like 2021 or November. Yeah, see, I think I found it think I found it. Israel central banks is accelerating its study research preparation of the possible issuance of a digital shekel aimed at creating a more efficient payment system. We are committed to being at the forefront. Bank of Israel began to consider the possibility of issuing a CBDC in late 2017, but a year later, yeah, I think it was, uh, I don't know if that was it, but uh, yeah, they're in the game as well too. I think it was with the IMF as well. Let me see if I can, oh, here it is, man. My memory, man, my memory is crazy because December 2021, like I just said, Israel hosts cyber pandemic exercise simulating a cyber attack on global financial system with 10 countries, IMF, World Bank, and BIS. You know, it might be a crazy December here. That's for sure. Israel's Ministry of Finance hosts a cyber pandemic exercise similar to Cyber Polygon where 10 countries, the IMF, BIS, and the World Bank simulate a cyber attack on the global financial system held in Jerusalem on Thursday. The cybersecurity training exercise dubbed collective strength was aimed at increasing international cooperation that could help to minimize any potential damage to financial market and banks. You know, a lot of people I'm sure forgot about this, but I mean, there's a lot of heavyweights here, you know, in on this United States, United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Italy, Israel, Germany, Austria, BIS, World Bank and IMF, you know, so pretty massive here. And now we're about like two years later, heading into December and everything going on right now, you know, it could be the future. I think I'm just going to end it off at that because that was pretty deep. So we're going to leave it off at that. And I'm excited to do some deep dives. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for me to get back with the scuba gear on. 
get in the trenches again because I am um, sure a lot of there's sure a lot of stuff to deep dive on. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, and I'm gonna end it off by playing this because this is gold. Somebody was pretending to be like a, a reporter that was obviously like XRP holder, whatever, at the Cybo Swift conference. And I was asking this guy pulled up on him like he's a reporter, but come on, this spells it all. So I'm gonna I'm gonna end it off like this. I'm gonna play this, like, subscribe, share this video. I think this was gold, gold nuggets in here. Definitely join the Discord links in the bio. I'll be sharing more snippets of that book in there. And um, I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you in the next video. Can I show your face or no? Yeah. Hi, we're here at CBOS, and this gentleman is taking his time to uh, um, answer a couple questions about blockchain and if it's going to be implemented in um, the banking system. So, can you let us know how uh, Swift is going to use blockchain for sending money? I'm not sure how Swift is going to do it, but for sure they will. It's on its way, and we are doing trials on it. Very good. And um, do you know about on demand liquidity and DLT? Yes. Okay, and do you know about a company called Ripple, and are they being used? Ripple, yes, of course we do. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Do you know about bills of lading, going to bills of e-lading in the UK? No, we are not involved on in that. Okay, but do you know about it? Yes. Being used on the blockchain? Yes. Trading is going to be on we, the blockchain? We had listened about it, but we are not involved in it right. at the moment. Are you connected with Ripple in any way, a partner with Ripple? Not yet. Not yet? That's a not very good, opinion. very good answer. All right, I really appreciate your time. And um, can I ask your name? Or... Artur Pereira from T Evo Technologies. Nice. And thank are you, you here from Portugal? Portugal. Wow. Well, thank you for coming to Canada and have a wonderful trip back home. Okay. Thank okay? you very much. You take care. Thank, thank you. you.